Hi, it's Elise here at Bowman Library with a whole new middle grade book spotlight. So this week, we are exploring one of my favorite topics. And if you've watched the Not Other Use, you may be able to guess. But I'm going to tell you anyways. We are taking a look at nonfiction. I love nonfiction. Like, ugh, I think sometimes it gets such a bad rap. But some of the best books I have ever read have been nonfictions, the ones that I cannot wait to tell people about. I love, like, and what I love about nonfiction, especially today, is there's, there, like, authors are doing an amazing job researching. They look amazing. They're filled with some great photographs and some primary sources. And plus, so many of them, especially a lot of the ones we're going to take a look at today, deal with either a time in our history, an event, a person, some science, animals, anything like that, that we normally don't get to talk about, learn about, read about. So we're learning something new, which is amazing. So we have six we're going to take a look at. So let's get started. Our first one is by one of my favorite nonfiction authors. We do have a ton more by this author, Gail Jarrow. This one is The Poison Eaters. Now think back, okay, to if you were living in the 1800s. If you thought back to living back there, there's really no electricity. Things are definitely different than they are now. Here's something that is something like really different. At that time, when you go to the supermarket, because or the grocery, I mean, there or a store, because there wasn't necessarily supermarkets, but when you would go to buy food, there were no ingredient lists on the back of that food. And you actually had no idea what you were eating. And believe me, Take it from this book, people were adding in some very weird and some very dangerous ingredients to food people were buying and then eating. Like for example, in some food, there were chemicals like formaldehyde in milk. I mean, that was used to like, you know, that's still used to like embalm bodies. Yeah, that was in milk. Or how about borax, which was used to clean clothes and also used in slime today. It was used in meat. Or there was even candy made with the poison arsenic, which could literally kill you in minutes. Now, this, this book then examines about this man named Harvey Wiley, who decided something needed to be done about this. There was way too many people getting killed, getting sick. This needed to be changed. So he decides he's going to set up these experiments now, to use, that used volunteers, which became known as poison eaters and they start eating some really questionable food and they have some pretty dramatic results now with his efforts as well as some ripples in the government and society this this whole experiment the poison eaters leads to testing and the eventual development of the food and drug administration would still exist today and we do have ingredients on the list of food the poison eaters oh, i love this one two truths and a lie now each chapter, okay, and there's chapters in here about plants, there's dinosaurs, there's animals, there's humans. Okay, each of these chapters, they provide three unbelievable stories, okay? So, for example, the chapter on plants, there's three different unbelievable stories about plants. But here's the catch. When you read these stories, two of these bonker stories are actually true, and one is is the lie and it's gonna be up to you to figure out as you're reading these which one which stories are true and which one is the lie now this is filled with a ton of facts there's also incredible fact boxes as you go we have some facts box here we got some awesome photographs i mean like there's just little like yeah I love this one, Learn So Much. It's a fun take on the game that maybe you've played before that you give two truths and a lie and someone has to figure it out. They just put a nonfiction twist on it. Love this one, two truths and a lie. Astronauts. Okay, this amazing graphic novel is all about space history and the women who made the space race happen, both in front and behind the scenes. Now. These are all about real life individuals. They worked as engineers. They trained to be astronauts and some of them actually went into space. The women went through all the same tests, all the same steps, all the same programs as the men did. And some of them actually did better than men, but they had to work so much harder to gain respect. And without them, the space race as we know it would have been completely different. 
Now, what's sad about all of that is, is a lot of them did not get the recognition though that they deserved. That's changing now, and this is one of those books that's gonna help with this. Now, um, Jim Ottaviano, who, who wrote this, he did a ton of interviews, so this is filled with firsthand interviews with women featured throughout this graphic novel. You will gain an incredible appreciation, admiration, a wealth of knowledge of, of, what, of what they did and what does it take to be an astronaut, especially in the past when that was new ground being, being broken for the first time, astronaut. Oh, love this one, okay? Yeah, shipwreck at the bottom of the world. Talk about like a real life event that is completely filled with some drama. And oh, it's, it's a thriller, I'll tell you. You'll be on the edge of your seat. Now, it's 1914, Ernest Shackleton was determined to be the first person in history to go down to Antarctica and cross the entirety of Antarctica on foot. So he sets off with a group of sailors and they go to the bottom of the world and this especially, this, this, this ship that's been especially designed for this and it's known as the Endurance. On the way there though, something happens that they weren't necessarily planning on. The ship becomes trapped in the ice and the whole crew is then faced with surviving the winter on on these ice floss like these little like iceberg type deals and while that's bad enough it's like sub zero temperatures here in antarctica okay there's food shortages there's health issues and there's despair and this goes on for five months yeah okay now they decide that they're gonna need to take their their survival into their own hands and they they set off on an 800 mile journey in an open boat to find help. Now, it's a real life adventure story. Again, it will keep you on the edge of your seat. I will tell you, you may believe this didn't happen. It did. I will also tell you that not everyone's going to survive this, but you will be right there with them. One thing I love about this one is there are actual like primary source photos from while they are in Antarctica. Let's see if I can find one quickly. Oh, like right here. I mean like, like these are pictures that were actually taken in 1914 in Antarctica. There's right there the endurance stuck on the ice. I mean like how crazy is that? Now, love this one. If you like a good adventure thriller, shipwreck at the bottom of the world. Oh, another one though, that's gonna have you on the edge of your seat. It is extremely different though, and this one you may have heard of. This is all 13. Now this one is filled with amazing pictures. It does look hefty. Again, it's filled with some, some intense pictures, but if you like an, an adventure thriller, edge of your seat that does a lot with technology, this one right here. Now on June 23rd, 2018, so just five years ago, a little over five years ago, 12 members of the Wild Boar soccer team, as well as their coach, decide they're going to explore a nearby cave after they're done with soccer practice in Thailand. Now what happens next is going to be something that would capture the attention of the entire world for the next 18 days. As they find themselves in this cave, quickly trapped when the cave becomes flooded with these horrendous monsoon rains that come out of nowhere. This amazing story will take you through everything that happened over the course of this rescue effort, which was made in hopes of rescuing all 13 individuals who were trapped in this cave. You will not be able to put this one down. Um, even if you know what happens, you will find yourself so enthralled in this story and you will learn so much about the technology that was used, the search and rescue efforts. The, like, it, it, it is amazing how far technology has come. I mean, like the last one we just talked about, they were gonna go 800 miles in an open boat. The technology, yeah. It's nonstop action adventure. I highly recommend this one. Again, don't let the like the width, the thickness scare you off. There's tons of incredible pictures, all 13.
And our last one is A Few Red Drops. So this nonfiction book takes a look at an event that happens in July 1919. And I will tell you this, I knew nothing about the Chicago race riots until I read this book. Now, it begins with it being summer, it's wicked hot, and in order to cool off, okay, four black teenage boys decide they're going to go to a beach in Chicago. And they soon find themselves floating too close to the beach that's been deemed for whites only. It was then that a man on the beach starts throwing rocks at them, and one of these, like, and some of these rocks end up hit, like hitting and killing one of these, one of these boys. This ends up leading to this inc like intense riot between blacks and whites, which lasts for a whole weekend. It leaves 38 people dead. There's over 500 wounded. And while tensions were growing for some time, like this didn't just like happen. Tensions grew for a long time. It just took this one event to basically like light the match for lack of like better like words like to like to to get like to get these riots going. Now this does take a look at the events that leads up to this as well as what happens during the race riots as well as and then the lasting impact after. Um, and as well as the mark that it leaves on society even to today. It's filled with photos, there's primary sources, there's interviews. It is a must read about this event in history which is not talked about. And it should be. Like, like we need to like we need to know what happened in our history. A few red drops will do just that. So these are just six of the nonfiction books we have here at the library. So come on out check out one of these or we can help you find whatever that perfect nonfiction book is you're looking for. I promise. I hope you have an amazing week and I hope you tune back next time for a whole new middle grade book spotlight.